Hey, my man. Hey, Rick, how's things, man? Good. How you doing? Excellent. Thank you. So That's let's right. get let's get to it. You've got a new album coming out. First new music in a very, very long time, nine years. Yes. Um, and it's about hometown. So how does the boy from Bow Desert end up in Nashville? Good question. Uh, I used to come here a lot in the sort of early 90s um, after I put my first album out because I used to come here to write in the 80s and um, and then I made my first album in Los Angeles in 1991, I think it was. Uh, so I've always sort of had a connection with uh, Nashville and then my friend Tommy Emanuel was living here 2008 and uh, he called me and said, you should come on tour with me in America and Europe. I said, yeah, sounds good. So I uh, packed a bag and came to America and stayed with him for quite a while and just toured all over the States and, um, and Europe. And I just liked it and decided to stay. Pretty simple. It wasn't really all that thought out. It was, um, you know, I was just kind of following my nose. How's natural change since then? Quite a lot. There's a lot more people there now. Um, the population's really grown. The popularity of the place has just gone nuts. Um, but, yeah, so it's a little more sophisticated, I suppose, with more people, more restaurants, more, you know, pretty stuff to look at. Um, but, uh, you know, the core of what goes on here uh, is just music. It's songwriting and making records and um, there's just a, a lot of that going on everywhere, people's houses and studios and back of taxis, I suppose, you know. It's just, um, it's still very much a live and vibrant music scene here. Do you think that the LA scene has um, infiltrated and overrun Nashville? No, I think it's the other way. I think LA people have migrated here uh, purely for work opportunities because Nashville is also a hub, not just for great musicians who make themselves available for people's rec to play on people's records, session musicians, but touring musicians as well. Uh, Nashville is a great hub for uh, you know, three central uh, place for people to you know sort of start their tours or whatever. But it's I think a lot of it mostly is people that uh, musicians are gravitating here to play on people's records and, you know, they need jobs. Like LA and New York, I think just the amount of records that got made, studios closing down, all that kind of thing, you know, people just migrate here. Yeah, but there's yeah. like the growing populations, not really just musicians, it's just people from everywhere. Yeah. It's just gone nuts, yeah. That's cool. Now, mm. Hometown is out, you know, on 6th and it's about growing up. In your hometown, so Bow Desert, for those watching, listening, is about an hour south of Brisbane, where I am. Um, what You're was, Brisbane. yeah, what was it like growing up in a little town, which is, it's still a little town called Bow Desert? What was it like for you as a kid? It was great. Um, and just by the way, the first single is out on the 6th, Can't Keep a Good Man Down, but the album will come later. Um, okay. yep. I haven't set a date yet for that. But uh, it's coming a little bit later in the year. Um, Bo Desert, the older I get and the more I've sort of travelled around the world, the more I appreciate it. It was a very simple life, you know, small school, all of that. But for me, it was uh, kind of special because I, we, all my siblings and on my father's side, everyone was musicians and we all played at the local country dance halls every weekend. Yep. So from when I was about eight years old, I'm, you know, singing Credence songs and God knows what, um, very badly, by the way. Uh, you know, so my childhood was great. Swimming in creeks, that's what the song Hometown says, you know, dusty roads and swimming holes and blankets on the ground, uh, old-time songs and sing-alongs. Uh, the sun is sinking down, but there's a light on in my hometown because there's a heart fire there for me. When I go into the town, it's just I'm flooded with, great memories uh, of growing up there. So it was really special for me. Now, you mentioned you can't keep a good man down. You've, um, yeah. you've given people a tasty little sneak peek on your on your online profiles. 
it's yeah. super bluesy, but yet pop rock for me. Um, tell yep. me the the impetus for that track. Well, uh, it was something my grandfather said to me many years ago, and of course, it's a saying that you know uh, is well known on planet Earth. Can't keep yep. a good man down, meaning that you know. Uh, don't let the circumstance of your life drag you down uh, and reach, you know, uh, for your best self, reach in for inner strength, reach to your friends, whatever it is that you, that well of strength that you need to draw on to carry you through hard times. But that's what my grandfather said to me, you know, I was a kid, teenager, having a rough time. And he said, you know, just remember, mate, can't keep a good man down. And it sort of stayed with me. Um and then one, you know, that's how songs happen. They just, they come in the psychic mail, so to speak. You know, I'm sitting there playing the guitar and then I get this idea. Oh, yeah, I can't keep a good man down. It's like, sounds like it could be bluesy. And I just start writing it and the thing writes itself, literally. And, um, you know, that's how songs happen for me. I, I write them and I apply, I suppose, what I've learned about songwriting uh, to the idea. But the idea comes floating down the, the 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 chain somehow, you know. Sure. Well, when it <laughs> yeah. comes to songwriting, do you set aside like time in your day, like it's almost like a job where you go, no, I'm going to sit, I'm going to pick up a guitar. Yeah, you, know, you might have to wait for something to come out, but mm. do you apply yourself like that? I do. Um, and that's, it's, sort of necessary for me to do that because that is, you know, um, my job, so to speak, writing and recording and producing music. Sometimes I'm writing and recording for other people. So, you know, definitely there's a schedule involved. Um, and I apply the same thing for myself when I'm doing a new album and I sort of decide, oh, I'm going to make this record and I'm going to put it out here. Then I just start gathering songs. So then there's a I know I've got to discipline myself every day to get songs finished because I've got an iPhone full of, you know, hundreds of ideas yep. as they come through. But, you know, I don't, I might be driving to the supermarket or in the shower when an idea comes and that's not an ideal time to write it. So I park them there and then, yes, I do allocate time to write uh, specifically and I'll look at ideas that I like. And then I'll look at something and then something else will creep in. So, you know, it's a mysterious process, but uh, but I love it. I enjoy it. Love and it's it. hard work too. It's very frustrating too. It's not all rosy writing songs. It's just, it's just not. I understand it's a great uh, thing to receive a song idea, you know, from the, the channel. But um, And sometimes it's, it's a... It's an amazing experience to be in the thick of that really dreamy state of writing. It's another level of consciousness, honestly. It's not like, it's like a semi kind of dream state. Yeah. Uh, but it can be frustrating when nothing comes and you, you know, you're banging your head against the wall. Yeah. You've got some pretty heavy hitters playing with you on this album, like guys that have played with Kenny Wayne Shepherd and, and Hart, Joe Walsh. Tell me about who you've got joining you on the tracks. Yeah, on Wayfaring Strange, my last album of gospel stuff, I had, um, yeah, a wonderful band, uh, you know, Dennis Crouch, um, Tom uh, Bukovac, and a bunch of really uh, incredible musicians, which they're just, Nashville is littered with amazing musicians. On this album, I've got Fred Eltringham playing drums and Steve Mackey playing bass, beautiful, unbelievable musicians, uh, played with a lot of people. And Dan um, uh, Dugmore, who's played with James Taylor, uh, Neil Young, Linda Ronstadt. He played the original pedal steel solo on Blue By You. I mean, these yeah. guys live here on farms and wherever they are, but you can find them and they can play on your records. So, um, and a beautiful fiddle player, Aubrey Haney. So, man, yeah, it's like it's pretty crazy here. When people come here to my house to the studio and play, um, I basically just turn on the mic and try to stay out of their way, you know, yep. because, you know, they don't need me to micromanage them. What was the song for you that took the longest time for this album? To write? Yeah. Um, gee, there were a few. Um, 
I've got a song called Love Letter to My Soul. And I think that was, that was a song that I, I had to sort of work on the inner mechanics of it a little bit to get it to flow, like the feel of the song, the engine of the song. Yeah. Sometimes you get an idea for a song and it works great on the acoustic guitar and all of that, or the piano, and then it comes time to put some music to it, you know, other instruments to it. And it's hard to know, gee, that drum feel, that just doesn't work. That sort of seems to disrupt the feel of the song. So sometimes I've got to really dig down and record a song a couple of times before I go, ah, yeah, that's it, you know. That's, I think that's been the most challenging song on the album and it's probably you know do you can you say you have a favorite child no but no it's one of my favorites <laughs> now you said that you write for other people where's the craziest place we might have heard music and not realize it's you the craziest place oh dear um she was like i don't know about crazy let's see Oh, well, for instance, and you might remember this, you're too young, but uh, I had a group, I wrote songs with a good friend of mine, Noel McDonald, for a group uh, called Girlfriend. And I they very much remember them. You do? Well, I wrote that first number one single. Get this, my record's out there. I'm number two or something in the chart yep. of three, and their song, which I wrote, uh, was number one. So it was great to have a number one hit, and they were an amazing group of girls. It was really fun. Uh, but at that same time, I had to, I realised, like, well, I've got to pay attention to my own uh, recording career. So I, I, I wasn't able to continue working as a writer and producer for that project, and Noel took it on. But that's probably the surprising thing, that take wow. it for me, too. Yep. I'll be good to you, baby. Um, people sort of freak out and they think, oh, you wrote that song? I go, yeah. I I was it. born in the 70s, so I remember that all the times from the oh, 80s, wow. 80s scene yeah. very well, where everyone was competing to be the next new kids or new girl on the block. I know, and it was wild. It was like a fever that took over the planet. Um, yeah. The Spice Girl fever or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Now, now back to you. The tour starts uh, in Nambour on the 13th. Yeah. What can fans expect? Because you're going to obviously preview a few tracks from the upcoming album. But is yeah. there some, is it going to be some just for Rick moments in the set where it's like, here's some stuff I, you might not have heard? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's very insightful uh, that you would ask that question because it's true. Um, I'm thinking about that. It's brewing at the moment. Um, I know I'm going to play songs that, you know, favorite songs that people know. Uh, you know, my hit songs that uh, are popular with my audience. Uh, and I'm also going to be playing a handful of songs from this new album uh, and from the Wafering Stranger album. So, it, I mean, it's good to play some things that I haven't played uh, before yeah. because I just want to, you've got to have something new. You've got to be saying, well, this is what I'm working on. What do you think? And give it a shot, as well as playing some familiar themes. But I'm thinking about the sort of the secret uh, little thing that's going on in me is like, I want to change my performance up a little bit. I want to do some things that are different, engage with the audience in a different way. And so some ideas are starting to flow through about how I can do that. And it involves sort of walking around in the audience a little bit and how I might change the introduction of the show. Anyway, it's still brewing, but definitely thinking of some new ways to connect because I think in a way I, I felt like in the making of this record, there's sort of been a shift in me. I can't really put it into words, but I feel different about mm -hmm. music, my records, songwriting, life, my audience and connecting. So I feel like I want to communicate some of those things, uh, you know, through the performance of the show. What music are you listening to yourself at the moment? I don't actually listen to a lot of music, um, especially when I'm recording, but I listen to instrumental music. I like to get a break from the singer, um, yep. you know, uh, so I love all kinds of instrumental music. I listen to Miles Davis, um, you know, like that's just a standard um, thing for me. 
uh, and sort of classical music I listen to. Uh, I love kind of really modern uh, loops and, and pads and all stuff that I don't usually do. Yeah. Uh, it's refreshing to me. And then I'll go back to my old favorites like Mavis Staples or Nora Jones or Jeff Tweedy or I like, I think if I was singing in my sleep or, you know, if I had to choose a style of music, it would be 70s country rhythm and blues music. That's when I was a nine, eight, nine, ten year old, ten year old kid, I was born in 61. So when I was 10 and music was just hitting me, Creedence Clearwater Revival, or, you know, um, Chris Christopherson, and Johnny Cash, you know, James Taylor, like that folk country, yep. rhythm and blues, the whole sort of Sam Cooke, all of that music was coming through and hitting me at once. So that's what I feel like I am. I write, I try to write whatever pop music is or how you want to categorize it. I try to write hooky melodies because I love songs that have a good hook. Yep. But they have, that's the style of music that really excites me, country, rhythm and blues, love it. Now, interesting, you've, you've done some pretty extensive touring over the years. For yeah. you, what has been your favourite time on the road, be it solo or with someone else? I have to say that my solo shows are my favourite because it's very intimate connection with the audience. There's no frills. There's no... I just walk on the stage, there's a chair, I sit, I play the piano and I sing. That's what I did as a child. I used to love sitting on the back steps and just picking the guitar and playing. And that's still my favorite thing to do, or at the piano. So, um, and I love that feeling of just flying into Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane or different, checking into the hotel and then just going to the gig and knowing that it's a very relaxed, private, uh, personal connection that I'm gonna have with the audience. That's my most favorite thing. Certainly, there have been some bigger moments, of course, over the years, yeah. you know, bigger stages, lots and lots of people, not all the bells and whistles, so to speak. But yeah. I'm a, I just prefer, and I love that setting, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, but I love the intimacy of a very private, easy, no-frills connection with the audience. That's my favourite thing. And so I do a lot of that. Excellent. Um, and so that's my favourite. Have you got have you got a go go to guitar you're going to be bringing with you, or have you got one already here? Well, I've been. Trying, this is my favorite um, uh, guitar that I usually tour with. Yep. It's about I don't know, you know, sort of made in the '90s. Uh, it's an Australian guitar, made in acoustic. Yep. It's been smashed and rebuilt so many times you wouldn't believe it. Uh, and Mayton often give me. Um, beautiful guitars when I'm in Australia to use. So I may be leaving this girl at home this yep. time uh, because the main guitars are all so fabulous and I do have one in Australia that, okay. I, that I totally love to play. It's great. And you're going to be here but, for uh, quite a bit of time. So is there going to be a bit of downtime for you, a bit of catching up with family and friends or you're flying backwards and forwards a lot? No, 100%. I'm going to be, I like to be in Australia for at least three to four months of the year. And that's just to be with family, hang out, cook meals, walk the dog, you know, uh, whatever. Um, to just have that time to just be. So I have a lot of downtime when I'm in Australia, apart from my shows. Um, a lot of time with the family, which is really good. And, you know, it's great to catch up with old friends too that I haven't seen for years. But generally it's time to just really connect with my son and my granddaughter and uncles and yep. aunties, all that. Yeah, that's great. Now, talk about cooking a meal. Everyone needs to go to your Facebook. You are, you've are you got the kitchen videos on there. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's worth the trip. What's your favourite meal at the moment? What's the one that's uh, Rick's number oh, one? Man. My number one is a steak. Like, is there anything better than, and I've got these new hex cat, hex clad pants that Gordon yeah. Ramsay uses, right? I go, oh, well, if he uses it, it must be great. So I got one and they are amazing. Um, and there's nothing like getting a beautiful, like New York uh, cut steak or something like that and cooking it. Cause if you get it right, it's amazing. Yeah. And, um, I'm a simple guy. I like steak and vegetables. I'm not a big salad guy. I kind of, yeah, 
don't mind salads, but they always sort of gurgle around there. Vegetables, for me and my digestive tract, work great. Sweet potato and greens and that sort of thing. And I love sauces. I make my own sauces of like all kinds of different stuff. I combine together all sorts of different condiments. My family crack up at me because my fridge is just loaded with lots of condiments. But a steak, mate, who can beat a great steak? You just can't. Yeah, you're going to have to be like in the line of the musos that have put out their own sauces. You've got you know, Joe Perry from Aerosmith and Michael I'm Anthony from it. Van Halen. You have to do it. Hundred percent, mate. You've start. You, I've never thought about doing that, but I am. I am going to do that really? because some of the sauces I make, like I've got this sweet chili bacon jam. Can you believe that? Yes. Um, and teriyaki sauce and these great German mustards, and then and Kewpie mayonnaise. Not to be yeah. underestimated. That's a good product you can get in Australia. I combine all these things together, or a lime uh, marinade as well. Um, all of those things and combined sources. If you drizzle that over a steak, it's like, oh my God, does it get any better? Especially if you sear the steak. Yep. You know what I mean? I don't like steaks that aren't a little bit almost crunchy on the outside. Yes. You've got to sear them. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Sauce. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. got to come up with a name for the sauce. But uh, Rick's Bow Desert Barbecue. Bow Desert Barbecue sauce. Boom, there you go. Man, you could be onto something there. Trademark that. <laughs> Rick's boat is a barbecue sauce. Man, that sounds good. Boom. Ideas, man. You All are, right. brother. You are. All right, Rick. I'm going to let you go, let you get back to work. You'll be here not very long at all. So everyone yeah. get out. Here's some of the new tracks. You know, No offense That's to true. Facebook, but the, the sound compresses the hell out of it. So you're better off to hear it, it in a live setting. Um. Mm -hmm. We look forward to the album a bit later in the year, but look forward to seeing you. I think you're in Brisbane just after the kickoff at Lefties, which is a killer yeah, little Lefties. venue. That's a great little venue. I love it. Um, is that date? Is that the it's been I 14th? I think it's something. the 14th, straight after the Nambour show. Yeah, people can go to my website, yeah. rickrice.com, and uh, all the show dates are there and the tickets and all that. Yeah, awesome, mate. So looking forward to it, man. Hopefully we'll see you in Brisbane and enjoy your day. Make up some barbecue sauce and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Great to chat with you. See you, mate. Have a good day. Awesome. Bye. See you, mate.